Welcome back to the RAS, ACS, and Behind the Knife general cast on landmark papers and surgery. I'm Blake Berman, a general surgery resident from the University of Tennessee College of Medicine, Chattanooga, and I will be briefly reviewing the landmark article, Preoperative versus Postoperative Chemoradiotherapy for Rectal Cancer, first published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2004. For locally advanced rectal cancer, surgery with adjuvant chemoradiotherapy has been shown to improve overall survival rates and local control of disease. Since 1990, the standard of therapy for stage 2 and stage 3 rectal cancer has been resection with postoperative chemoradiotherapy. With that in mind, several studies have found that preoperative chemoradiotherapy can also improve survival rates and local control of rectal disease. Given the benefits illustrated with preoperative or postoperative radiotherapy with adjuvant chemotherapy, a trial was constructed to compare the two in the treatment of locally advanced rectal cancer. A randomized control trial was conducted with the enrollment of patients occurring between 1995 and 2002. Patients were eligible if they had stage 2 or 3 rectal cancer, aged less than 75, and had no prior pelvic chemoradiation therapy. Exclusion criteria included prior non-melanoma cancer diagnosis or contraindications to chemoradiation. Patients underwent total mesorectal excision for their rectal cancer, primarily using low anterior intersphincteric and abdominal perineal techniques. The decision to pursue sphincter sparing or abdominal perineal resection was made prior to randomization, but was ultimately left to the discretion of the surgeon at the time of the operation. Patients randomized to preoperative chemoradiotherapy underwent five weeks of radiotherapy prior to surgery with chemotherapy during the first and last weeks of using fluorouracil. Both groups underwent the same protocol for chemoradiotherapy except for a 540 centigrade boost to the tumor bed in the postoperative group. Patients were monitored for signs of acute toxicity during treatment and long-term toxicity at one, three, and five years following treatment. 415 patients were randomized to the preoperative chemoradiotherapy group, while 384 patients were randomized to postoperative chemoradiation. Of note, significantly more patients in the preoperative group completed chemoradiotherapy with fewer protocol violations than in the postoperative group. Additionally, abdominal perennial resection was deemed necessary for 116 patients in the preoperative group and 78 patients in the postoperative group by their surgeon prior to randomization. However, at the time of surgery, there were significantly more patients who underwent sphincter sparing surgery in the preoperative group compared to the postoperative therapy group. Major findings of the study involved recurrence of rectal cancer and overall survival following preoperative or postoperative therapy. Preoperative chemoradiotherapy was associated with a lower rate of local disease recurrence, while there was no difference between rates of distal recurrence. Furthermore, there was unfortunately no difference in the survival of patients with locally invasive rectal cancer between the preoperative and postoperative chemoradiotherapy groups. When side effects of treatment were compared between the preoperative and postoperative groups, rates of acute toxicity were significantly lower in the preoperative group overall. Specifically, rates of diarrhea were lower in this group. Additionally, rates of chronic toxicity were also significantly lower in the preoperative group with lower rates of strictures at the anastomosis. Based on the findings in the study, preoperative chemoradiotherapy results in an improved ability to complete the full prescribed course of chemoradiation with fewer adverse effects and lower rates of local recurrence. However, there was no survival benefit compared to postoperative chemoradiation therapy. For patients with locally advanced rectal cancer, neoadjuvant chemoradiation therapy should be considered. Again, my name is Blake Berman, and you can reach me at the email address provided below. Thank you for listening.